time to start the next session. The okay, the first speaker is Radiv Karandika from Chennai Mathematical Institute. The title of his talk is Positive Cons Conservative uh, Semigroups and the Markov Process. So, happy birthday, Sundar. And I'm very happy to be here to be speaking uh, on this occasion. Uh, I had met Sundar uh, within a few days of me formally receiving my PhD degree, not in a convocation, but me being told that all the process for your degrees are, is over. And uh, within a day of that, I had gone to Delhi to spend some time with KRP. And uh, that's when I met Sundar first. Uh, and we, we became instantly good friends. Uh, Subsequently, in 84, when I returned to ISI as a faculty member, he, I returned to Delhi and Sundar was at Delhi. And uh, that was many years ago. So both Sundar and I were classified as young Turks because we were poking our nose in various administrative affairs, which some others felt we should not. So long time has passed since then. And uh, But we have, uh, while well, he left Delhi soon after that, but we kept meeting now and then. And uh, there was even an occasion when uh, we wrote a letter to Current Science where I had an unusual role of, uh, you know, toning down the anger in the letter that Sundar had drafted. Usually, it was me who would be writing something angry and others had to tone it down. But that was one occasion where uh, our roles got reversed. So, <clears throat> after he moved to IMSC, yeah? Now we have become old. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> So uh, when Vijay asked me to speak, I was thinking, you know, what uh, should I speak on for this audience? So what I thought was that I would uh, uh, talk about connections between Markov process and semigroups uh, and uh, explain the uh, significant role played in this framework uh, by uh, what is known as Martingale problems introduced by Struck and Varadhan. And uh, with the hope that uh, with the experts on quantum probability as well as free probability in the audience, maybe uh, they may draw some analogy and think about what would be the corresponding object in their respective theory. So, quantum probability, of course, I know there is a, a, a Markov processes and such things are very much uh, there. I don't know about free probability where there is a discussion on Markov processes or not, but nonetheless. <clears throat> so, uh, so. If you have a one parameter semigroup acting on uh, uh, bounded continuous function, say on uh, S, where S is a complete separable metric space, I uh, will be confining, because I am connection with prob talking about connections with probability theory, it will be confining to the case when it is a positive semigroup, which means uh, when function F is positive, uh, the, uh, TT of F is positive, and conservative, so TT of 1 is 1. So. Uh, if L is the generator of this semigroup, uh, where the domain DL is this uh, class of functions where this uh, derivative exists, so TTF minus F1 over T exists. And uh, since we are in working with operators, uh, and uh, uh, we have various choices of uh, the sense in which one can take the limit. So let us say if we take uh, this in the sense of uh, sup norm on uh, uh, bounded continuous functions, let us say. So, uh, so domain L is the class of functions f for which uh, this lim uh, uh, limit exists in the sup norm sense and then we define L of f to be g. So then L is the strong generator of the semigroup and uh, if instead we take the limit in uh, uh, bounded pointwise sense which means this limit exists for every x so 1 over t t t of f x minus f x equal to g x holds for pointwise and uh, this as a family of functions is uniformly bounded. So that is uh, uh, called bounded pointwise sense and in that sense uh, if we take the limit then the uh, generator is called the weak generator. There are many other choices of this topology and uh, of course uh, uh, if classical results like Hilly you see that theorem as to when is an operator, uh, when is an operator L a gen generator of a semigroup and so on and so forth. Now, uh, an interest in probability theory is the case where the semigroup is indeed given by a uh, integral kernel. So uh, the action TT of a, uh, TT on F is given by integral of F against a kernel mu t uh, x dy. So, uh, <coughs> so you have this family uh, indexed by T and x and uh, of measures indexed by T and x. Now. Uh, 
of course uh, since we are assuming that the semi group is acting on the class of continuous functions it puts lots of conditions on this uh, family of measures for example uh, for a fixed t as functions in x it is uh, continuous in the what we call the weak topology or what Krishna called the vague topology of measures uh, because uh, only then we will get tt of f to be a yeah. Uh, continuity if, if we are taking the see the whatever topology we will take for the semi group uh, for the considering the generator so if we are taking working with sup norm we should take for each f, for each f, t, f yeah, norm continuum and uh, if we are working with this bounded point wise topology then it is enough to consider the case where t going to tt of f of x is uh, con uh, continuous and uh, uh, remains bounded. So you see this boundedness comes easy because if uh, all the uh, because our tt of uh, 1 is 1 that means each of this should be a probability measure. So uh, if f is bounded then uh, this gets uh, the uniform boundedness is easy to get. So then it only reduces to that uh, uh, <coughs> t going to tt of fx is a continuous function of t for every fixed f and x. So, you do not need any other continuity. Yeah, so uh, yes, see the uh, <coughs> see in any case you have the semi group property. So, T of 0 is identity. So, there then whatever continuity assumptions I impose that will give me uh, that it should go to identity as T goes to 0 in the appropriate sense. Now the uh, the semi group property that t of uh, t plus s is equal to t of t composed with t of s that implies that this kernels uh, mu t x dy satisfy this integral equation. So uh, mu t of y and uh, the set b you integrate with the, this kernel mu s x dy you get mu of s plus t x b. So this. Uh, has a very nice interpretation in probability theory. So, if we interpret mu t of y b as the probability of a particle at y reaching the set b in time t, okay. Uh, so, so that is what this is probability that starting at y you reach b at in time t. Then when you integrate it means you started at x in time s you are at some intermediate point y and then you in time t you get to b. Uh, so, that should equal uh, starting from x going to b. Uh, so, uh, this interpretation would be valid if our assumption is that uh, once you know that you are at y the probability of going to b uh, is given by this kernel irrespective of how you got there. So, in general if you are talking about physical systems uh, this may or may not be true. Uh, how you proceed from some point onwards may depend on how you got there the probability structure thereof. So, uh, uh, the semi group property means the mu should satisfy this and therefore one can interpret mu as probability of a particle at y reaching b in time t irrespective of how it got to y. Now the second property is what is called the Markov property that <coughs> uh, the once you fix the present position uh, the uh, probability law governing the evolution from then on does not depend on uh, the history of how you got there. So, the uh, uh, Markov property and the semi group property get care, uh, just completely intertwined and uh, that is why early study of uh, Markov process uh, uh, processes uh, in 20s, 30s and 40s was also the time when the semi group theory uh, lots of interesting things were happening and uh, very early on uh, Markov process theory got uh, uh, intertwined with in, uh, semi group theory and there was uh, usage of semi group techniques in the Markov study of Markov processes from early on. So, uh, okay, so I was here at this point of saying that one can interpret mu t y b as the probability and uh, irrespective of how it got there. So, then one can show that uh, for every little x in s, so this is like starting point, one can construct a probability measure uh, on the space of all paths from 0 infinity to s and uh, we 
capital XT are taken as the coordinate mappings that means any element here is actually a function from 0 infinity to s so any element rho here is a function from 0 infinity to s so we define XT of rho as rho t it is like taking the standard coordinates in RDE and so on so this is the coordinate mappings uh, and then we can construct uh, a measure px on this uh, path space which satisfies so this left hand side is simply probability so you have points t1 t2 tn i should have written that uh, they are in the increasing order t1 uh, less than t2 less than t3 etc so probability that xt1 is in a1 xt2 is in a2 xtn is in an or uh, m uh, this probability is given by uh, this n fold uh, n minus 1 fold integral so uh, think this should have been n because on the right hand side I have taking n so so from uh, this is the probability that from y n if you are at y n plus 1 the probability of reaching a n that integrated against from y n minus 2 to getting to y n minus 1 integrated over a n minus 2 and so on so uh, by this construction we get uh, we can define a measure on what could be called the uh, cylinder sets on this path space so it is like in when we define product topology you define rectangles so this defines uh, a measure on rectangles on this path space and uh, one can show that uh, this measure on these rectangles can actually be uh, <coughs> extended to a probability measure on the uh, on the sigma field generated by those and then this p sub x can be thought of as describing the probability law of a particle which starts at x and you evolving as per this transition uh, function mu okay so uh, xt is said to be markov process with transition probability function mu t xa now the generator l of the associated semi group so so we started with the semi group from where we got hold of this mu that uh, and <coughs> so the generator of the semi group is also called the generator of the markov process now uh, this path space that i described earlier is too huge for uh, useful analysis often and uh, early on the focus was shifted to uh, when can we construct these measures on suit uh, better path spaces or nicer path spaces so for example continuous functions from zero infinity to s or uh, a, a terminology which is very standard in probability literature but not otherwise is called d zero infinity so these are uh, uh, functions which are right continuous and have left limits everywhere so uh, there are only one kind of only jump discontinuities in other words no other discontinuity okay so these are regular enough paths uh, <coughs> so uh, under some suitable conditions on this uh, uh, transition function mu one can construct the probability measures on either c or on d and <coughs> in particular if you take uh, s to be rd the heat semi group given by uh, uh, t0 being identity and tt of fx is the integral of f against the gaussian kernel so here the transition function mu is given by a density uh, so in this case uh, the measure p0 starting from 0 on c is called the wiener measure the coordinate pro process is called the brownian motion and p sub x is simply translate of uh, the wiener measure for uh, the brownian motion or for wiener measure the generator l is given by half laplacian uh, this is a statement which is very commonly heard but uh, this is uh, not a very precise statement more precisely uh, uh, twice continuously differentiable functions with compact support are in the domain and then for f in uh, such a compactly supported uh, twice dif continuously differentiable function l of f is half laplacian so the uh, uh, if you really want to say what is the generator we have to again go back to what is the topology in which we have taking the derivative and so on and so forth and uh, but generally whatever topology you take will always have the c2 0 to be part of the domain and uh, on that it agrees with the laplacian mm. if we take l to be the weak generator then one can actually show that c2 functions with uh, uh, not uh, compact support but bounded uh, second derivatives functions and with their all uh, two derivatives are bounded uh, this is in the domain and it is still given by the Laplacian now uh, from Laplacian let us move on to a second order differential operator uh, 
So the, uh, the second order derivative terms are, have a coefficient a i j x and uh, first order have b j's and where a j x is uh, let us say a positive definite matrix valued function continuous function. So x going to a i j x is continuous for every i j and for every fixed x this matrix is uh, strictly positive definite. So and uh, this b j is simply a vector valued continuous function again bounded because my a of f I want it to be bounded. Now so this question as to under what conditions on a can we construct a Markov process such that l is its generator l is a extension of a. No, no strictly simply means for each x for each x it is the it is strictly positive definite yeah yeah it is because you know uh, whether you non negative and positive or positive and strictly positive. So there is always confusion about this terminology. So all I mean is that for every fixed x this is a, a strictly positive definite matrix that is all. Now uh, the, the process x when it exists is called a diffusion process with diffusion coefficients a and uh, drift coefficient b and uh, just like uh, Brownian motion was supposed to be model for motion of uh, particles in free space. Uh, if one looks at motion of uh, particles which are subject to intramolecular interactions and uh, having an external field force uh, then heuristics it was derived that it should still be a Markov process and uh, its generator should be something of this form okay. And very early on there was a lot of focus on as to for what A and B uh, is really this a generator or strict or its extension is a generator of a uh, positive con conservative semi group. Indeed uh, this question as to when is this A, uh, when is this uh, second order differential operator uh, generator seems to have uh, uh, been a focus of a uh, lot of ma major research themes in probability theory all through the era uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s. Uh, so uh, early answers to these questions were based on semi-group theory and connections with partial differential equations. So uh, <coughs> then in the 40s uh, Professor Ito developed the theory of stochastic integration in order to answer this question in order to construct diffusions and he was able to do it in uh, uh, cases which was not covered by the PDE and semi-group theory. PDE and semi-group theory required the uh, coefficients and their two derivatives to be holder continuous roughly speaking. Uh, Ito was able to construct these when uh, assuming only that uh, these are Lipschitz. Uh, strictly speaking you take the square root of A as a symmetric matrix and that is uh, Lipschitz. And uh, <coughs> he thus avoided the heavy dependence on uh, PDE techniques and but that was apart uh, this was a starting point of an entire uh, discipline in probability theory which later found applications to various other things including finance. So uh, but the origin of Keito's work was this uh, now uh, early on it was observed that uh, if a diffusion exists with a generator A and I put it in inverted commas because I mean that an extension of A is the generator then uh, this associated family of random variables or associated process MFT. So you take f of xt okay, and subtract from it 0 to t af xs ds. So it was observed that this is a martingale and uh, I am not even put down the definition of a martingale in the standard probability language but in a language appropriate for this audience. So uh, which means that this if you look at increments in this mf so mf of t minus of mfs so increment between s and t on this process f mf then it is orthogonal to uh, this uh, family of uh, uh, functions or family of random variables hs which is simply uh, the algebra of uh, uh, functions gen, uh, of g of xs uh, where you take the points s from the his path. So you take finitely many points in the past you take finitely many bounded continuous functions and compose them with uh, g1 xs1 gk xsk with each of this this increment is orthogonal orthogonality is in the sense of L2 yeah yeah uh, 
yes but uh, but that means that you are a, you have not a started with a rich enough a okay so uh, uh, yeah well defined uh, yeah it, so uh, yeah starting with any operator a one could pose uh, this problem yeah and uh, it, so uh, in probability language it means that this being a martingale means that the conditional expectation of mft given the history up to time s equals this but uh, that same thing simply means that you take the increment it is orthogonal in l2 sense to this and <coughs> here everything inside because of the conditions i am putting are in l2 and therefore i can talk about orthogonal in l2 when we make uh, if we make extend this to a case where we allow uh, let's say uh, this not necessarily bounded and so on we still would require l1 in which case we will interpret this orthogonality to mean uh, l1 l infinity orthogonality this hs will interpret as uh, uh, in uh, l infinity and this object in l1 then we can think of it as l1 l infinity the interplay orthogonality so which simply means uh, integral of this times any of these functions is zero and that is precisely the conditional expectation equation so uh, yeah so the connection between Mar uh, Mar uh, markov process on one hand its generator on the other hand and martingales this uh, connection had been noted earlier and was the basis for something called the dinkin formula uh, with, okay so this had been observed earlier and uh, indeed uh, <coughs> do had shown that uh, ito's original work which uh, required very deep analysis and lots of estimates could be simplified a lot by using uh, this uh, tool which do were developed called martingales so the and this connection was apparent in that work so <coughs> in uh, around 67 this paper appeared so struck and varadan observed that given a now at this particular point i am still in the specific case of the a being the second order uh, differential operator so struck and varadan observed that if you fix the coefficients so that fixes this uh, differential operator a if for every x that is the, for every starting point there exists a unique probability measure px on this uh, nice path space such that the measure sits on the uh, portion which begins only on paths which begin at x and uh, what i call the martingale condition that means mft minus mfx is orthogonal in hs so the struck varadan observation was that for the differential operator if you get uniqueness of this probability measure px you there exists one such and that it is unique then uh, tt of fx defined by this so you take uh, f of xt and integrate with respect to the dp measure that gives a semi group and uh, its generator is an extension of a and this is the unique a semi group whose uh, generator is a extension of a so the uh, problem of when does a give rise to a unique uh, generator when is extension of a a, a a generator and whether that generator is unique that problem gets transported to uniqueness of this probability measure px and one may say that okay one uniqueness problem gets transported to another uniqueness problem but here there is a lot more structure and a uh, lot more tools available uh, various kinds of transformations including stochastic integral martingale techniques and various estimates are available so it gives uh, uh, some new tools in order to attack this question of uniqueness and uh, the uh, just like uh, the La brownian motion has connection with laplacian and uh, there is connection between brownian motions and brownian motion and solution to differential equations uh, involving laplacian the dirichlet problem and so on so forth likewise there are connections between the cauchy problem for a differential operator and uh, uh, this uh, uh, existence of uh, uh, this probability measures which i have not put down on slides but that prompted uh, the connections with cauchy problem is what must have prompted struck and varadan to call this as a martingale problem so uh <clears throat> they said that a measure px on c is a solution to the martingale problem for the operator a if uh, these conditions 1 and 2 hold okay uh, martingale problem for a starting at x and where is a appearing a is appearing in this uh, uh, definition of mf so 
uh, that is what they said that uh, martingale problem is to find a measure p which satisfies these two conditions and if for every x you have existence as well as uniqueness then it is called well posed no no you start with n you are construct trying to construct a measure p so that this is a martingale yeah huh anyway you can figure out whether there will exist at all a fun, uh, okay no so many things are known if this being a restriction of a generator which is a positive and so on so forth so for example it should satisfy the maximum principle it should be dissipative whole lot of properties about this a are known so if one of those doesn't hold you know a priori that it is a bad case okay so <clears throat> and in fact struk verden showed the following that uh so their work required this a to be uniformly elliptic yeah uh, but uh, ethos uh, thing which requires lipschitz does not require uniform elliptic in fact he didn't even, he only wanted non negative definite so there are but for struk verden theory uh, you need the a to be uniformly elliptic so there is a delta such that uh, for all real numbers so here it should have been a x uh, so uniformly uh, the eigen values of aij matrix are bounded below by delta uh, uniformly Uh, and uh, then a is a continuous function with at most quadratic growth and b is measurable with at most linear growth so uh, this uh, did, they did not do it the first step the first they had only bounded a and b and a and b continuous uh, later uh, it has been extended to allow a to have quadratic growth and b to have linear growth but under these conditions it is shown that the martingale problem is well posed for a is well posed where a is of course again the second order differential operator so uh, from holder continuity to uh, lipschitz ethos work and from uh, doing away with lipschitz only requiring continuity in this and measurability in this is a uh, struk verden theory and uniform elliptic uniform elliptic for well posedness of martingale problem i am okay uh, maybe uh, because the uh, it, but interestingly the struk verden work the uniqueness is actually a throwback to pd theory so ito tried to draw it away from pd theory and uh, struk verden work uh, is heavily uses the pd techniques and the estimates thereof and that is where this uniform elliptic arrives so if there is some work which avoid this then it may be again going back in a different path i am not aware so i should look at that so in general the uh, the weak generator l is a extension of a and uh, then uh, writing so let us write mu t of b to be uh, you compute the probability of x t belonging to b starting at x and then integrate with mu 0 okay so it is like if you start with the initial distribution mu 0 and run the process up to time t where will you be so that is this measure mu t so it can be shown that mu t satisfies this what we may call a evolution equation so integral of f d mu t is integral of f d mu 0 and the increment is given by integral 0 to t integral l f d mu s d s so this equation corresponds to the uh, semi group e uh, the equation t t of f is equal to f plus integral 0 to t t s l f d s so that translates to this now uh, one difficulty in using say, say in probability theory for example given the generator l it is of interest to characterize or get hold of something handle which will tell me how mu t is going uh, okay so in order to use this this equation the, the class of we may, if we think of it as a equation with a test function so the class of test functions is domain of l but in general it is often difficult to get concrete description of domain l even in nice cases we have second order differential operator with some smooth coefficients even then getting hold of the full Uh, description of the domain is difficult so in a sequence of papers starting with a uh, hwaya who was a phd student of varadhan uh, and then tom kurtz and in this area me and abhay uh, but we have also contributed it has been shown that when the under the struk verden conditions on uh, the operator a when the martingale problem is well posed indeed this equation now i have replaced l with a a and uh, i have also added one uh, uh, perturbation term uh, so this 
equation where the test functions now are from domain A and domain, remember domain A is something which we start with A and domain A, so we choose. Okay. So this equation also admits a unique solution. So this with if f in domain L it admits a unique solution that comes from semi-group theory, but you uh, using Struk-Werden techniques if one shows that uh, Restricting the test functions to the class of domain A, this one still has a unique solution and indeed the unique solution is given by you have the distribution of this process at time t and weighted by what we may call the Katz functional uh, uh, which Katz thought of uh, based on uh, Feynman's work on the Feynman uh, uh, integrals. So, <clears throat> so this term has an effect of uh, adding a potential there. And, uh, and as I already said the significant aspect here is that the test functions are required to be in domain A rather than domain L. Now uh, in this again in the struk werden framework actually one can show that these measures mu t come out have a density p t and so the this evolution equation which I had written uh, translates to uh, this I replace mu t by p t dx and I have this I have written in a di differential form. So formally this equation can be written as this differential equation del pt by del t equal to a star pt uh, a star being a formal adjoint chapman yeah the chapman kolmogorov equation and uh, the interesting thing is that the uh, from the semi group theory one can't deduce that this has a unique solution but once you have come use the struk werden well posedness just from that technique one can show that this admits a unique weak solution and likewise the perturbed equation You see uh, G bound you do not see the interestingly here you see that it is e power some integral of G. So if G is uh, the lower you see when you about A you see I have started only with bounded continuous functions but those things one can extend in many different ways okay we can define function classes so that you can bring in unbounded uh, G into your picture so that you can still talk about the generator and so on. But the bounded above one can't get rid of for this reason. Now uh, I come to a uh, few minutes but I will come to a general definition. So uh, till now I talked about this connection in the specific context of A being a second order differential operator but this connection is deeper and one can uh, uh, do in more generally. So I've, here I have just put down what do you mean by a process. So process is just a family of uh, uh, random variables of which are family of measurable functions. Now one important thing is if you have two such families of uh, random variables or two processes we say that they are equal in distribution if <coughs> these two are equal. So you take uh, g1 x uh, uh, <coughs> I think super x here is missing or I should have removed it here. So uh, this is the sense in which equality of uh, two processes is concerned and then very generally if you are given a some subdomain of bounded continuous functions a linear space and a linear mapping A one can pose a problem as to when does there exist a process X such that uh, it is a martingale MFT is a martingale namely MFT minus MFS is orthogonal to HS MF is again given by the same okay. and so this time I am not restricting to A being a differential operator. At this level of generality we say that this martingale problem is well posed if for every initial distribution mu 0 you have a unique process x such that that mf such that it is a martingale and uniqueness is in the sense of if two of them have solutions which have the same initial distributions then uh, they uh, they are equal in distribution and at this level if one assumes that very minimal things the domain a is a algebra which strongly separates points and contains constants then well posedness of a martingale problem implies that the solution is a Markov process you will have a generator and that generator is a uh, extension of A and uh, this thing uh, involves a lot of things about setting up right kind of spaces and proving measurability. One of the difficulty is that uh, when we talk about well posedness of a martingale problem we are talking about for every fixed measure initial condition we want one measure but then we want that these things are interwoven to each other in a measurable fashion and that turns out to be one of the most difficult questions in resolving these issue. But uh, so that was uh, Abhay, me and Bivira we did uh, one final piece of work which put uh, uh, paid to some of the early work that I had done with Abhay. 
Further, uh, if for a probability measure mu, integral a f d mu is 0 for every f in domain a, then mu is the invariant measure for the associated semigroup or integral l f d mu is 0 for every f in domain l. So, when this problem for a is well posed and gives rise to a generate a semigroup t t with generator l, uh, this for all f also implies this. Now, the fact that in the given framework this e uh, implying uh, this orthogonality relation is implying this makes one wonder if indeed a is a core for l that means the graph of a its closure is the graph of l and indeed uh, 20 years ago I thought that must be true and spent about 3 or 4 years trying to prove that though I was advised against that by various experts that it is not going to be true. Eventually we have found an example to show that it is not so. Earlier uh, Struk had told me that uh, I am telling you that I have an example but it is too complicated it is not worth time spending on just have faith in me when I say I have an example. So now we have an example which is simple enough. So this says that in a sense there may be multiple extensions of A uh, which are generators of semi group but only one of them is a uh, generator of a positive semi group. Uh, you see initially if I put a1 to be a1 to be 0 I include then it will imply that l1 is 0 and therefore conservative I will get but it may not be positive. So there may be multiple extensions of a which are generators which are semi group uh, generators of semi groups but only one of them is a semi group a, gen, a semi group uh, positive semi group. Or you may have an infinity of uh, positive semi groups. No, no a positive semi group only one I get. Okay, but then uh, that will not fit in this framework because conservativeness I can uh, deduce by just Im including 1 in my domain of A and requiring that A1 is 0. That will give me the extension L1 is 0, so TT of 1 is 1. So they will not fit in this framework. Yeah, but what you say is true. If we do not put A1 equal to 1, then we may get that, uh, that only one of them is uh, uh, conservative, others are not. So here in my example, what happens is that while I have a I have a sign measure mu such that integral a f d mu is 0 for every f in domain a but uh, there is a function f such that l f d mu is not 0. So the so the problem or whatever is the, the interesting part is about this positivity rather than the other way. So, uh, so it can also be shown that uh, the distribution of that solution satisfies uh, uh, this uh, corresponding to this Chapman Kolmogorov equation or uh, <coughs> Uh, this is a general version thereof once again for every f in domain a and that this equation admits a unique solution. So uh, from the uniqueness of the uh, process on this uh, much bigger space we get something concrete about uniqueness of solution to such an equation. And the same thing with uh, uh, a perturbation thereof. So uh, just one slide that the conditions on boundedness and continuity of AF that I had imposed can be uh, significantly diluted. Uh, continuity even describing it is very complicated but boundedness for example I am, uh, is, can be replaced by the following that there exists one continuous function phi such that uh, the growth of AF is always controlled by this function phi. So AFx is less than equal to constant which may depend on f times phi of x. So this one can be used to replace the boundedness condition. Uh, a is now a general matrix, uh, general operator that I am starting with. Uh, yeah, so in, in the diffusion context, second order operator, but more generally, in terms of when I am talking of an abstract space, any operator A for which I am posing a martingale problem. Uh, this is my last slide. So, one can also consider uh, martingale problems for nonlinear operators. So, they correspond to uh, physical systems which are evolving with interactions. Uh, and uh, uh, one can still talk about the associated uh, evolution equation, Martingale problem, Markov process, something which was called by uh, McKean to be nonlinear Markov process. And uh, this connection can be used to indeed prove uniqueness of solution to the associated nonlinear equation. And uh, this was done, uh, for example, in the context of uh, Boltzmann equation for specially homogeneous case without angular cutoff, and that was again many years ago with. Uh, Horowitz I had done this work. So uh, to sum up uh, the uh, using martingale problem techniques uh, one is able to characterize these Markov processes uh, and uh, get 
questions of uniqueness about uh, this evolution equations associated with the semi group uh, one is able to answer them by talking about uniqueness of the associated processes so the uh, the semi group the generator and the evolution equation are living on this uh, uh, these are operator theory language from there you lift these questions to this path space and martingales and so on and so forth you can use techniques there to con con conclude uniqueness and then come back here and deduce that there is uniqueness of the thing which you started with <laughs> So let me stop here. So any question or comments? Okay. So if there is no then so, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you. And, uh, we have a seven minutes break.